All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I want to introduce our special guest today, Tom Updegrove. Tom Updegrove is uh, one of the first people I know to have a computer way, way back in the uh, uh, early 80s. And um, uh, he's grown up with just about everything. I remember you were a Commodore guy, you were an Amiga guy, you were doing video capture. and, and uh, I still have my uh, Amiga 2000 with a video toaster. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think you even had a Radio Shack before then. Right? I had a Radio Shack for a Timex Sinclair. Yeah, yeah. So Tom's been hacking for many, many years, and uh, uh, I've I've gotten to work with Tom uh, over the years quite a bit, and it's just been wonderful. He's one of the most amazing That's individuals. Funny stories. <laughs> Tom is now uh, teaches uh, CEH. He also owns uh, Internet Work Service, where he does a lot of this work. So whatever he's talking about, he's like I told you guys, I I mostly talk for a living. Tom is out there constantly working doing this stuff and tom is also one of the very few licensed penetration testers from the ec council so a very rare individual here so take it away tom but why don't you uh, share your camera if you can license to penetrate sure. hey it's uh larry i appreciate uh you asking me to uh, say a few words to everyone here let's see can i get a camera on good all right so i got a couple quick little um bits to come across here one, let's look at the, um, just the uh, methodology of, of hacking in general, or ethical hacking. All right, so uh, the first thing that we do once we've got a gig and got a signed permission from the uh, stakeholders, um, we perform reconnaissance. Uh, we, reconnaissance, is uh, determining all that information. Um, hey, their IP block, um, domain names that they own, um, web presence, um, uh, what type of social um, uh, information is out there about them, uh, what kind of business they're doing. Um, this reconnaissance phase can go on for weeks, really, to gather as much information about the company as possible. Uh, before ever uh, we move to that phase of scanning. Um, uh, but walking around the cycle here, um, we, we do our recon, uh, we gather information. Uh, we really need to know things in that recon phase, really um, what uh, uh, type of security posture do they have, what kind of policies, uh, um, everything from uh, passwords to their, um, um, disaster recovery, um, backup, uh, their um, data loss prevention. Uh, I mean, you guys are going through all those phases at this well, point. Well, when you say password, you mean password policy first. Password policy, right. Yeah, so all, right. All, their, all their policies, uh, you need to understand it really before you can enter into a scanning phase. Right? Uh, scanning is detecting uh, what live IPs there are. Uh, scanning is done on an external network. It's done on an internal network. It all depends really on the uh, scope of the uh, the pen test that's being done. Um, uh, again, uh, if we're looking at it from the hacker's point of view or from the cracker's point of view, from the um, um, the person that is bent on stealing something, just doing it in a dishonorably way, then uh, they're not getting any permission, but they're gonna go through the same phases. Um, uh, once they gather enough information from those live IPs, those live hosts, those live services that are running, um, they'll then mount a plan of attack and they'll gain access. Uh, once they gain that access, uh, generally they go through a second phase of scanning to find more um, promising uh, information, uh, scan, finding other machines on the network. Uh, and at the same time, they're gonna move to the next phase of maintaining access. Uh, they're gonna melt the, uh, they're gonna merge into other processes and they're going to go low and slow. Uh, this is why it's difficult to, uh, really to find uh, people that are in the network. Uh, today, a lot of pen tests are done uh, with the thinking that somebody's already in the network. And we're doing blue team and red teaming. Uh, red team's given access to the network and blue team's got to find them. Uh, and it can go on for a while. 
Um, and one of the reasons it is is because they clear the tracks. They uh, disrupt right, I think they had backwards. Isn't the red team has to break in. Red team, red team's already let in. We're assuming you're assuming that red team's in already. I mean, uh, they have the ability to break in. We know it. Um, so, assuming that they're in, blue team's going to have to find them. Blue team, uh, so that was great training for blue team to really locate, to try to understand uh, the types of maneuvers that they're doing. And generally, red team isn't always doing a, a vertical uh, permission um, escalation. They're uh, moving on a horizontal level, just uh, gaining access to more and more uh, folders and uh, data. Um, and how they're doing that is by clearing their tracks at the same time. Um, Ultimately, um, all that information for the ethical pen tester is rolling it into a report, a report that makes sense to management and stakeholders. Um, and again, um, once um, the report is turned in, uh, remediation methods are um, indicated and applied, um, process starts over again. It's an ongoing, well, we know it's the, the, the old Cisco security wheel, it's a constantly ongoing process, right? You're never secure, you are securing. Okay? So we might look at security really as a verb. Um, so uh, we see that first phase is reconnaissance, and I give you a thumb, we'll break down on that. Um, putting it into practical thinking, okay? Um, think of a football team. Um, what's the first thing uh, they did? What, what did the Eagles do prior to uh, the Super Bowl? Right? They watched films. They, they gathered as much information as they could um, about New England um, so that when they got to the field, uh, they were prepared. They had plenty, plenty of information. Uh, so in a practical way, uh, we do this for just about everything that we do, uh, whether it's um, going for a driver's test, uh, going for a job interview. You want to know um, uh, the kind of interviewing techniques of your potential employer. Um, you gather information, reconnaissance. Scanning, once, that, once we know what we're after and where we want to go is intended to understand the live hosts that are on the network. And uh, these tests are done both in a, what we call a white box and a black box um, type test. White, uh, a white box test, we are given um, all the information that we need. Um, Black box tests were given no information, very little information. Um, and we need to um, determine and understand uh, the nature of the target. Um, in scanning, um, we uh, find those live hosts and then we scan for ports. And when we're doing that port scanning, uh, we're looking for, for services. Um, services that are active, um, uh, tell us the versions of the services, and it gives us some indication of uh, the um, uh, defensive posture of that network. Uh, hence, on the football line, um, once those guys line up, right now, at this point, they're looking for vulnerabilities. You're scanning uh, for holes in, in the line, you have ways to get in, um, uh, ways to manipulate the other team. Uh, in the same way, the defensive group is, is um, trying to detect uh, exactly what the exploit's going to be. Um, so I think uh, uh, in real life, uh, we see these concepts. And I liked, I liked Ralph's uh, talk yesterday when he was talking about um, – uh, just the, the uh, security as a contemporary uh, movement, uh, moving from the enterprise to the individual, um, trying to make something complex, simple, and understandable. And I think that this is one, one of the goals that us as security researchers really need to do. 
security. You know, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, and here's where I, I, I'm putting my hope in AI. I'm hoping that at a certain point, Alexa is going to secure me more than I Oh, have. without a Alexa. doubt. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to. Yeah, without a doubt, because you're going to see, I mean, I'm going to go through a bunch of manual processes, but it's already happening. We're, we're, we're already getting there. Uh, I mean, uh, when we look at our uh, threat information and our ability to take the threat information and utilize that uh, uh, almost instantaneously, um, uh, we're getting there uh, quickly. In fact, I mean, it's going to be really AI defense against AI offense, isn't it? You know, That's they're not set on the line. You, you yeah. got <laughs> you the ones. I, I bet exactly you. how I see it because the botnets are already you know, AI driven. Yeah, and it's really, in fact, um, uh, uh, let me drop the screen for a sec. Um, I think the whole world uh, all revolves basically into this. <laughs> this Old is man really, magazine. really you know it's like um you know i had a i had a a, a buddy of uh, years back it was a graduate of uh, drexel university um engineering and what the guy did was um he installed uh, burglar alarms you know in a day you had to tape up the windows you know and you know it would tape up the windows guys would cut a hole in the roof uh, they would put in motion detectors and they would find ways around it. There's always a constant um, um, evolution of um, spy versus spy. So, uh, our next phase is gaining access. Uh, gaining access is after you really uh, uh, exploit it, you understand where the, the holes are, where the vulnerabilities are, uh, developed a, um, um, an exploit that can overwhelm that. Uh, and and they, they come in so many different varieties. Um, we've got uh, the break through the line. Um, maybe that exploit goes all the way. Maybe it only goes some of the way. Um, then we want to maintain access, right? So maintaining access um, uh, would be um, dropping a back door into the system so that even though you may exit, you're going to be able to return. Uh, one of the simplest tools for this is NetCat. NetCat, you can sit as a listener on a system um, and then en enter back in. Uh, what others are going to do or drop in some type of a backdoor Trojan um, uh, that uh, quietly sits there um, but allows that person back in. Um, uh, the Eagles, okay. Um, I'm seeing a constant thing. Access. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So they're maintaining access of the, the, the trophy uh, till next year. Hey, who we knows? Sure hope they who knows? Uh, uh, all the last is our, we want to clear a track. So this is where we manipulate the logs. Uh, um, we uh, hide our position as much as possible. Um, um, so that you may distort the logs. And this is really, um, I think, one of the advantages of having um, off-site logging so that you, your syslog is going off to um, a um, out-of-site server um, so that uh, that information uh, is that once something happens, even though somebody um, deletes the logs, or, or alters the, uh, uh, time scan of the logs, manipulates them in some way, um, you still have that uh, safeguarded uh, information. You can draw inferences from it. Um, in, uh, in martial arts, uh, clearing the tracks, we call an angled departure. That um, once somebody's dumped and down, you move off at a slight angle uh, and avoid any last minute flails. What, what did you call that? It's called an angled departure. Oh, I thought you said Ed Parker. No, we, had, angle, we actually yeah. have a third degree Kempo specialist here. Uh, awesome. Well, he, he would know. You know, he would understand the uh, angle of departure. Yeah, I told him that uh, that you knew Ed Parker. Uh, and you got your fifth degree. Wow. From, you know? yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, this guy's yeah. one of Peter DeMond's abundance uh, members as well. So, cool. Yeah, it had uh, tons and tons and tons of students. Yeah.
you know, but I was fortunate to spend time with him and uh, it was an amazing man. Uh, and I learned a lot really about security from him. Um, um, he has a whole concept called preparatory considerations, uh, which start with um, understanding your environment, understanding what dangers are in the environment. Uh, so whether you apply the strategy towards a physical environment, um, a emotional environment, or a digital environment, the principles still hold true. Yeah. Yeah. For those who don't know, uh, Tom is also besides a, a licensed penetration tester and IT specialist. Tom is also uh, uh, one of the best known martial artists, certainly in the Philadelphia region and all over the world. Tom is a ninth degree black belt, uh, and you hold that in a couple of styles: Kempo and the Joe Louis fighting system. And he's been with just like every major martial artist. You know, Hoist Gracie and uh, a few of the Gracie brothers. Well, you know, we go through life and we um, we seek out. Um, expert that's why i know larry because larry's uh one of the <laughs> most yeah larry's one of those knowledgeable guys in um not only security but in technology in general and where technology is headed okay he's always on the cutting edge um and although you're he's talking now about um information security uh in the exam um he's 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 out on the he's out on the bleeding edge when it comes to uh blockchain and the uh, um, disruptive technology that is headed our way and how we're going to prepare for it you thank know? you shifu uh so so in my last here's my last slide uh, just talking about what um uh, what we need are weapons Oh, and, uh, in this no, case, uh, Nessus, Nmap, Metasploit, Kali itself is a weaponized operating system. Uh, contains most of these tools. Uh, Kane runs in Windows, of course he doesn't run in, in Linux, but it's an awesome tool. The uh, Social Engineering Toolkit, the Burp Suite, uh, CAPTCHA. Some of these are, are um, uh, performance tools, uh, but performance tools are also tools that will help us to understand um, um, the environment, um, understand the vulnerabilities, uh, how to patch up those vulnerabilities, how to remediate them, but at the same time, how to exploit them. Okay? Uh, as, as ethical um, um, hackers, we, we want to understand the weaknesses that we have, um, how it happens, um, and then how to then build defenses against it. Um, same attitude holds true, and that's how Larry and I really came along with the whole concept of cyber kung fu. They didn't know um, more, that term yet. More to it than that, but but it it's pretty much the basis. Um, so uh, that in itself um, is a little bit of a presentation. Um, uh, of course, uh, in uh, CEH uh, we've pretty well spent about three or four days <laughs> going through that bit. So that was a, a, a succinct um, search of it. Now, what I want to bring up, though, is uh, my tool. Okay, so uh, Kali Linux is a free distribution. Uh, download it. I happen to be running it right now um, in VirtualBox on a Windows machine. Uh, VirtualBox is a free uh, application of uh, virtualizing application, virtual uh, hypervisor from Sun. Um, um, they work on it, they update it, and uh, it makes a great, it's a great tool. I like it a lot more for this type of stuff, uh, what I call the cyber dojo, uh, than um, Hyper-V uh, or even uh, VMware. It's free. That's a good sign for me. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's and free, yeah, um, free, and you know, and it's not clunky. I mean, this thing is is worked on. Uh, I'll tell Larry, I was trying to uh, change some screen sizes last night in the latest version and kind of crashed it. So um, um, I've spent a lot of time really in the older version. So we're gonna kind of roll with that. Um, you'll see once you load that at Inkali, uh, you have a series of tools that you can uh, utilize. Uh, information gathering, vulnerability analysis, web app, uh, password attacks, wireless attacks. Uh, there's even stuff in here for, for uh, playing around with uh, Arduino and um, 
uh, different, different type of uh, um, uh, small computing uh, uh, module. Um, so what I happen to have here in my um, I've got a mess of machines, but I've really got, uh, I've got a Windows 7 machine running. I've got a 2003 server and, and uh, I got another Windows 7 machine up as well. So I got two Windows 7 machines and a 2003 server uh, on the same network as my colleague. Uh, so what we want to do is, uh, in you know, 2003 server, uh, there's, I think, 18% of the servers that are running still are 2003 uh, for one reason or another. Um, what are the reasons? Uh, I, go, I go into a job at a law office two weeks ago and uh, uh, the owner wanted to make some changes with that work and I said, well, let me look at what you have and uh, sure enough, he's running uh, on three machines, Windows XP. I go, why are you running this thing? This thing's like five years out of date. I mean, it's, it, it's bad news. And he goes, well, we have this legacy, this application that we use. And, and all we used it for was generating a list of how many phone calls came in um, that day so that he could call the people back. Uh, so I said, well, you, you imagine if you, were, um, you lost your client's information and you were in a court of law and the, and, uh, the uh, uh, district attorney goes, well, did you, re you were warned that uh, you were running a vulnerable uh, Windows operating system, and you did nothing about that. Yeah, um, what would your defense be? Um, so he uh, he agreed to upgrade everything um, within a couple of days. Uh, so uh, so that's pretty much what the uh, virtual box interface looks like. Um, actually, one of the first things that we want to do is uh, a scan. Um, we want to make sure that uh, these machines are live and so on. So um, we, um, we have a tool called Nmap or Zenmap. And I'm going to pull out the, the GUI version because I kind of grew up in GUI uh, type of tools. And in here, I'm going to put, um, we're on a, a 10.0.0. Um, the, the HCP server is 10.1. We don't need to know that. I know that um, I'm up really, as I'm, my all the machine is 50. Um, the Windows 7 and the 2000 machines are like 51, 52, 53, but I'll do a quick, just a quick um, scan. Let's do a, a, a regular scan of, um, I'm gonna go one through uh, three. And otherwise, this will take a while. Uh, again, uh, Nmap um, is one of the, um, uh, along with Wireshark, are two of the most downloaded um, tools that are out there for not only uh, technicians, um, performance technicians, but as well as security researchers, ethical hackers. Um, you can see that this uh, comes back, gives me wealth of information about all these machines. Um, Rights, I kind of went out of step here because I should, I'm really just looking for live host. So if I'm going through a large range, I don't want to be scanning ports yet. I just simply want to run a, uh, a ping scan to see uh, what comes up uh, on my radar. Once I find those live hosts, and then I'm going to do a port scan on each live host to find out what's available. Uh, but we can tell uh, a good bit of information about these already. Um, I probably have to go a little because I'm not identifying what the operating systems are in here. So if I, if I, if I went into a more intense scan, let's say on 53, let's do a, uh, a more intense scan. Yeah, I thought it did identify one of the operating systems because it certainly, by assuming some of the common ports, like if I see 139 or something, that's a Microsoft machine. Yeah, you know it's a Microsoft right off the bat. Okay. Um, so indeed, that's one of the things we want to do. We want to um, uh, determine what's available 
uh, what goes on. Are the web servers running? You've got, uh, you can see it as it's running through it. It's all these open ports. Um, uh, and this is what the bad guys are doing to you. And so, uh, in this case, naturally, these ports aren't going to be open uh, from, the, from the edge uh, firewall, from the edge router, but um, certainly internally. Uh, and I'm not running any firewalls here, so this thing is pretty, uh, pretty raw, uh, allowing us to gather as much information as we can about it. And, uh, once I gather my information, I uh, say, so, you know, I've got some, I got some pretty uh, vulnerable uh, machines here. Uh, so I'm gonna take another, another machine and um, I happen to have Nessus running on this guy. Yeah. So Nessus is a uh, vulnerability assessing tool. Uh, it, it can do a, it can do uh, uh, web server, uh, internal, external, uh, PCI, um, dial uh, scan. And for you test takers, it's actually quite a uh, test objective, not necessarily Nessus, but to know what a vulnerability scanner does and, and, and what's the purpose of running one. And I think we talked a couple of you have already run them. Yeah. And so I took the liberty of actually running a scan a little earlier today. Um, uh, save you the labor of sitting here and just going through it. Um, but you can see that it's actually picked up a series of critical vulnerabilities, um, two of which is the MS08067 uh, Net API. This is actually the uh, uh, SMB uh, over TCP uh, service that uh, is vulnerable to uh, a injection attack that will not crash it, but will allow us to get a um, reverse shell into it uh, and then to total control of the system. Uh, if, um, if I can do this, um, I'm gonna steal, this is a domain controller by the way, and I'm gonna steal all the passwords and try to crack them uh, if, if I can. Uh, but there's another, um, another vulnerability as well. So both of these probably are just as doable. <laughs> Uh, the 08067 is kind of a classic um, exploit. Um, and this is one of the reasons why the 2003 server and Windows XP, which are both vulnerable to this, okay, um, got to be taken out of the network. Um, they're they're, a, they're a, a really weak link. Okay. Uh, so uh, what can I do with this information? We go to our our colleague tool. And I think when you start to run all these things though, machines can kind of slow down. Yeah. All right, so um, I got to start up some services first. So uh, service uh, post SQL. Do I see Metasploit coming up? Is that what's going on? Yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna plug okay. that plate. So while Tom was doing it, he, he he scanned with Nmap, and you were able to see what machines were alive. And then with Nessus or some vulnerability scan, he found what they were vulnerable to. Well, this is a vulnerability exploitation tool. Now you can take advantage of those vulnerabilities. Is that right? Exactly. Exactly. So I'm gonna go through this manually first. As, as uh, how many people out there have actually uh, played with uh, Metasploit? I don't see um, I don't see the chat yeah. box, but a uh, little bit from David. Um, yeah. And David, by the way, he earlier pointed out he's a, a second degree black button. Kind of. Awesome! Congratulations! <laughs> okay, a lot of hard work. Um, wow! Uh, Who is your teacher? Yeah, David's local in the area too. Yeah, yeah. Is it Chaz Terry? Do you know that name? No, no. 
What's the school? DKI? Mm, uh, um, Richard, uh, Jeremy got it from Richard Hughes. You know Richard okay. Hughes? Yeah. Uh, you do know Richard, huh? Yes. Oh, uh, David's from MKA Karate? No, nah, don't know it. Don't know it. Hmm. But that's great. Well, I, I tell people you know everybody. Yeah, obviously I don't. Yeah, you know, the, I mean, uh, the world has grown quite a bit. Um, uh, One of the most impressive things, though, for many for, uh, when, when many uh, generations, uh, Hoist Gracie and everything, everybody involved in martial arts, the Gracie brothers are. The first time he came to the United States was at Tom Up the Grove's uh, invitation, and uh, he came to your school first. Nineteen ninety. Yep. Yep. Hoist couldn't even. Uh, couldn't even uh, speak English at the time. And the other uh, notable thing was that, um, uh, so those days, Hoist was living in Philadelphia. We would have, uh, we'd have a class um, every morning uh, for a couple months uh, while I was living here and uh, uh, with Hoist. Uh, but there was a young girl in class that I would kind of roll with at times, you know, and it turned out that, um, she eventually married Hoist. So I can honestly say that, uh, I've, uh, I've mounted Hoist's wife. Oh, oh easy. <laughs> I mean, you say you introduced <laughs> Hoist to his wife. Because <laughs> if you knew uh, jujitsu, you understand the term. So. Yeah. <laughs> Hoist, didn't mean anything by it, buddy. <laughs> yeah these tools do take a little bit of time to kind of uh, load up but um so i tried to do the you know the uh, julia child's uh, cooking show um with uh, some prepared casseroles you know so these are the ingredients this is what we put in here uh and <laughs> we put it in the oven and then this is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven I remember you and I went to uh, Henzo Gracie's grand opening at his school, <clears throat> and I got to roll with uh, his uh, guy, Vinny, one of his top uh, uh, teachers, and he didn't have much of a uh, sense of humor. I remember he got me in a rear na naked choke, and I just went, okay, do you give? <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me like, what are you talking about? I am obviously in superior position. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> so the first thing we do is uh, we search for the exploit. Um, so um, I'm going to look for what I call the net API uh, vulnerability. Uh, interesting enough is that uh, Metasploit now is rolled into um, uh, Rapid 7's better tools. Uh, so they have they have a, a commercial uh, Metasploit Pro, uh, which has more of a, a, a graphic user interface. Um, uh, Nextpose, uh, which is both a vulnerability assessing tool as well as a pen testing tool. Uh, you had a question here, um, and I could answer it for you. Ed, Ed wanted to know if you worked for Susquehanna, and no, but he actually, they took his class. As, uh, so you were contracted by the guys at, at Susquehanna to do... Yeah, the, the, uh, one of the owners, uh, no, one of the owners, uh, uh, Pete Smith, um, was my martial arts student. Okay, there you go. And Pete had a, he had a, um, just... Um, a vengeance. Um, there was there's a guy in town called Steve Maxwell. Steve is no longer in town, and Pete just um, wanted to get over on Steve. He didn't care what it cost. He just oh, wanted. Oh, that's to, funny. Yeah. That's funny. yeah. I want to beat that guy. Uh, so you can see that my search actually brought up a couple of of vulnerabilities. If you notice down here, we got this exploit windows SMB MS zero a zero seven six. So what I do is I I copy this. Okay? It's the easiest way to kind of do this. Okay? And the command is used. 
and then paste that in there. You know you have a proper um, exploit um, if we get this red underline coming out of it. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is we, we uh, run a payload, but I just wanna show you, uh, if I do a show um, payload, um, we're gonna get a mess of payload. So guys, what this says is now, let's recap what he did. We, we identified the machine was alive with MMAP. We identified that it has vulnerability. There's exploit code written against it. And the, if the vulnerability is say they left the door open, or they don't, or the lock is easy to pick. The exploit is, okay, we can pick the lock and we can then steal the TV. We can pick the lock and we can break into the garage and get the car. So all these different payloads are the, the different things you can do once you exploit that vulnerability. Right, so we know that the car lock is exploitable to air pump into the, at least that for this particular vehicle. I could pump air into the lock and it'll pop the, uh, the lock open. Um, if some vehicles are like this, uh, but do I use a tennis ball? Uh, do I use a pimple ball? I mean, uh, do I use an air pump? I mean, exactly how do I do it? And so that, that would be the payload. Um, but you can see we got all these different payloads. Okay? Um, I'm gonna take the simplest payload, okay? which simply is a uh, generic um, shell. Reverse TCP. Which would be like the worst. And we talked about reverse shells earlier, guys. You remember when I was telling you about SickyPod? Uh, SickyPod gave, uh, uh, we think it was the Chinese, reverse shells on all those DOD machines. So I set the payload. Now, there's a few other things. So um, at this stage, what you do is you, do, you show your options. So I need a R host, a remote host. So what's the target address? Well, um, we're gonna double check anyway. But I'm pretty sure that this box here. And you already knew that he could have gone back to his Nmap scan and found that. Yeah, I'm going back to the scan. Yeah. Oh, it's 10.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
fire walls, but the best way is to get somebody, social engineer, someone to click on a link that would actually do this for them. Uh, so the case here is, um, um, uh, I'll give you for instance. Uh, so um, often my cost, my customers are getting scanned, uh, and I can see in the logs who's scanning, right? So uh, I do a reverse scan uh, just to see where they're at. You know, get a, a geo IP location, uh, and go, huh? They're running. They're running a 2003 box wide open. And now, probably that box was already botted by somebody, uh, and they're using that really as a launching pad. Okay, but when they go, it's coming from China. Oh, the box was in China, but really, who really is the puppeteer behind that? You know, who, you know, who's who's the real, um, you know, Wizard of Oz uh, that's running the show? Hard to tell, difficult. Uh, but uh, so. And hence, right now, I do have a shell into this. Um, uh, I can, you know, uh, I could run commands on it. Tells me uh, the directories. I can move around in here. Um, so um, he owns that box now. He just I own owned the box. it. And, and and think about what just went on. That machine didn't have to do anything. So all Tom did was he found the IP address with Edmap, he found the vulnerability with Nessus, he exploited the vulnerability with Metasploit. It's like throwing a, a, you know, something at someone's house and, and then you get the, the key to the door back and you can open the door. So when, when we were talking about SickyPot, all it took was somebody to click on a PDF file and then the remote attacker got this prompt, this reverse shell. Yeah, I mean, typically with Metasploit, uh, you do a, an MSF Venom or Payload, you create a, um, a beacon. Um, and what you do is then you um, mail that to someone, uh, have them click on it. Uh, um, now, uh, John's asking, what rights do you have right now? So uh, Probably system, but I can, ele I can elevate my rights. And so, I mean, I can make files, but uh, um, I'm, I'll have some problems um, uh, moving on. But um, I'm going to move on. I'm going to show you an even better tool that uses Metasploit. So uh, we got a little more time, Larry? We've got 15 more minutes, yeah. All right, cool. So let's, uh, uh, let's exit out of this. Okay. And, and while you were in there, you could have grabbed the service account manager database while you were there, try to password cracking tool. Yeah, I'm going to show you even, even a more fun way to do it. Okay, so, um, um, all right, so this guy takes, to, takes a, a few minutes to load up. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm more of a graphical uh, interface kind of guy. So um, I like the, everything that's in Metasploit is in here. Uh, um, allows me to uh, to see where I'm, what uh, machines I have exploited, and I'm going to pull out a thing called the interpreter. So the interpreter is a another uh, element of uh, Metasploit that allows you to run a menu of commands, um, such as uh, dump all the hashes all the password hashes uh, to um, uh, uh, own the system, to raise your privileges, um, um, to take the um, um, code that I use to exploit, say the SMB service and to merge it into something else, to meld it out and to move into another, um, system service that is well known and uh, disguise myself. Yeah, so if you think of like a, a C prompt, when you do CMD and you get a prompt, you're getting a shell. The interpreter is an advanced shell uh, used for exploitation. Um, probably all of my machines are going to pop up in here anyway. Yeah, they did uh, because I ran I ran a I ran this earlier. So rather than take because you, you could run a scan. If I ran the um, in fact, you're going to see here. I could I can run an MAP scan, and it's like we did right. Uh, got the range. So now this tool 
allows me, I don't have to go through that first phase. I can just pull this tool up, um, do my scan right here. Um, and you can see that it's pretty well identified the machines as well. Okay. One of the cool things about this is that it allows me to find the attack. You can see this Hail Mary. Hey, this is, a, there's a tool out today called Autosploit. Um, which um, basically autosploit's intention is to take uh, AI um, information gained, um, vulnerabilities um, currently up to today, okay, and then automatically exploit the machine. Um, typically, it's a, a script kitty point and click kind of tool that um, uh, anybody can run. Uh, there's a lot of talk about it because, like, oh, that shouldn't be out there and so on, you know, but um why not um it's only going to make us um safer and stronger if uh, uh people um understand where the vulnerabilities are okay, so in this case i'm just going to run this tool it's going to run through um the window the windows 2003 server and look at all the vulnerable options that are in there and just to note that um, when I was in Metasploit, I looked at the potential exploits that are out there. I look at my left hand pane here, they're all here, right here. I could run any one of them right from this uh, interface. Okay, so um, I prefer uh, working from something like this. But when I go over to my uh, machine, look at my attack. I got a horde of attack. I mean, every one of these attacks aren't going to work. I bet you the 03026 will. But I'm going to come back to SMB and look, we've got the uh, 08067 net API exploit. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, use a reverse connection. Okay. And I'm going to launch it again. Let's see if we can uh, get this again. You notice now down here it says Windows Interpreter Reverse TCP. So it's going to bring up the um, language. Ah, you notice the, the big lightning bolt yeah, went across the machine. Um, I like that, okay? Because I know now that I've just got this machine. So I'm gonna go a step further. Uh, I'm gonna use the interpreter and in the interpreter, I have uh, a number of uh, tools, but I'm not even going to go here. I'm going to um, bump caches. Okay, I'm going to the LSAS method. But yeah. Bing, bada, boom. Um, yeah, well, they need to know. So these are a lot of test stuff. I don't mean to interrupt you. Bill, but no, it's no, not at all. Not at all. Um, it is common knowledge, guys, that means it's a testable objective, that all password files should be encrypted. And what they do is they hash passwords. So what he's done is he's grabbing the hash password list for this entire machine. Um, what makes this, cool, this tool even better, uh, with Metasploit, I had to get the hashes, then I had to get a, uh, a cracking tool like John the Ripper. John the Ripper's, it built right into this. If I go to my um, tool here and I go to credentials, um, there are all the hashes that we've got. And um, let's get rid of that. Scroll down here a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to run a crack on them. The password list in here, these are some, these are some weak password, I'm going to say, but I'm going to run it anyway. Alice of Marty's Dragon. Um, so need a relatively strong, but I now can take this these credentials that um, I've stolen and either pass the hash, um, the administrator's hash, uh, or the password that was cracked, um, and then start to probably these machines have some similarities to them. Um, so um, as well, I've got um, 
Um, I could log into the machine now using this password. Um, uh, I can um, interact with the interpreter shell. Okay? And just to give you a little idea of what the uh, interpreter shell does. Um, um, these are some of the commands. Now, each exploit has slightly different interpreter menu. I get, there's where I get the system. So the, uh, that's going to try to escalate and elevate my privileges. Um, uh, if there's a webcam, I can turn it on, record the microphone. Um, Lovely. Just absolutely. Um, uh, Um, certainly, um, uh, uh, IP config, uh, net stats, see what's running. Um, there's also the ability to now to take this process that's running, this exploit that I did, and, and move it into a different process so that um, I can hide my hide my track. Um, so uh, SVC and, host. That's yeah. like how many things can hide behind SVC host? Right? So when people do like a uh, a netstat or whatever they want to see what's running the services are running they don't see metasploit they see svc host or some other thing there um and that's a maintaining access type kind of thing right yeah uh remember that one pen test i did for uh what was it homeland security uh where they all went through their training it was awesome uh, so, I, was up. I believe so, fbi yeah 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 so uh, we used this tool against it, and what we did was just use the shutdown and basically shut down everybody's machine. They all, they all were in a, a machine that they had to uh, patch. They had to put up their antivirus. They had to. They had um, taken a training with another organization. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they trained them on all the things that, you know, how to defend yourself from an attack. And then to see if they learned their, uh, their lesson, they hired us. And I gave it to Tom. This is really Tom's field. I'm good at talking. Tom, much better at doing this stuff. And, and there were like 25 people, and I think he got 23 of them. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, most of them. Yeah. Uh, so, um, what we have any questions about what we've done? Up yeah, Jeff says, what's the tool called? And it is Armitage. Yeah, and Armitage, Armitage. Uh, that comes yeah. with uh, Cali, right? Yeah, it comes with yeah. Cali. So, it's a graphical front end to the uh, Metasploit. Now, now uh, this guy Raphael Raphael Mudge wrote this program. Um, he has since taken Metasploit. You know, he's left Metasploit in there, but he has a um, commercial tool called uh, a Cobalt Strike. Uh, Cobalt Strike is just an incredibly awesome uh, tool that um, is used for blue team, red, you know, for red teaming. Uh, but um, uh, he's got, uh, he, you can get a, um, uh, a trial version. Uh, he's got some great um, instructional videos that will show you both how to use uh, Cobalt Strike as well as Armitage. Uh, Robert's checking you on the spelling. It's, can you spell that? Cobalt? A, a, oh, Cobalt, Cobalt, C-O-B-A-L-T, Strike, S-T-R-I-K-E. Okay. Uh, two words. Um, okay. So uh, one other thing, I, before we, we end up here, I just want to make, I saw you starting the, um, the SQL database, the Postgres, and I believe one of the great advantages of Metasploit is that uh, well, we're going to be talking about uh, penetration testing after you're gone as part of our, our goal for either today or early tomorrow, and that's um, to deliver a report. And you can feed all of the results, so you can launch your Nmap scan, your vulnerability scanners from the uh, Metasploit uh, console, your, do your exploits, and all this stuff saves in that database, which you can then uh, uh, use for reporting, correct? Yes, yes. I mean, in fact, um, yeah, so it all depends on the tool. I mean, there's some built-in tools to Kali. Uh, personally, I, I like using OneNote. Uh, because uh, I can talk, I can throw videos in there. Uh, it's just a, um, a comprehensive tool that allows me to um, uh, build um, a, a file on a particular client. Uh, there's some screenshots of a Cobalt Strike. So this is, this is the big brother to Armitage. But uh, it's not bad. I mean, I think it's probably uh, maybe 1200 a year for license. Uh, but 
Um, if you're looking for a tool, uh, this is the one. And this will also do um, um, email pen testing as well. So you know how you that could, compares to, um, uh, what was the other big one that uh, I just had on the tip of my tongue? Uh, it was started by the Metasploit guys, or some of the Metasploit guys. Um, the rap, Rapid7, uh, uh, Nest, not uh, um, Nextpose? No, I just had it. Red, lost it. Redna? No, that's another scanner. This is an yeah. exploitation tool that auto goes out. Core Impact. Core Impact. Yeah. Um, you know, the, I think this has uh, far greater capabilities. Wow. Yeah. It, he has this beaconing uh, tool that um, you can slip into somebody's email. Um, it, no, nothing picks it up. And uh, it allows you to really ride low and slow. Um, it's a bad, it's a bad tool in the wrong hands. Uh, but, awesome. uh, yeah. Tom, that was great. So in, in, in the hour, I hope everybody appreciated that we saw how to enumerate the uh, live hosts, uh, find out what they were vulnerable to, exploit the vulnerability, uh, plan a backdoor and hide your tracks and, and, and hide those vulnerabilities, those, those exploits under different services. So fantastic. A any uh, questions for Tom? Get you the, yeah, I can't sleep. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. I thank you, Tom, very much for making time for this. Tom is one of the hardest working. He and Clement Dupuyo, I told you for the practice test, I don't know anybody who puts in more hours. If, if Tom's not busy working on something, it's because he's busy working on something else. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I learned that at training camp. You know, it's like, uh, you know, we would train till 10, 11 o'clock at night, you know, and then go out and have, uh, you know, five or six Guinnesses. <laughs> And uh, how, many, how many hours a day of, of uh, martial arts? You know, arts but, you know, some, I, I, you know I, the most important thing in life is to have passion. If you have passion, you're not working. That's why, you know, that's, I put them on Facebook, um, artists don't work, because um, I don't. Um, I live my passion, and, and I love doing this, and it was a pleasure uh, sharing it with everyone here and with you, Larry. Okay. Thank you very much, Tom.